Christ is risen. I hope you're having a blessed Easter season. Remember, Easter isn't just one day. For us Catholics, we get to celebrate it as we just finished the octave on Divine Mercy Sunday this past Sunday for eight days of Easter Sunday. And then we continue on for 50 days called Easter Tide. So your home should be full of flowers, celebration. I hope you're having a joy-filled time. I know, and we're gonna talk about uh, some of our special, a very special program at the Augusta Institute, a special children's program. So I know there's lots of kids watching and I hope you had a great, maybe you had a great Easter egg hunt uh, during Easter. I always got in trouble when we had our Easter egg hunts at home because I would run over my brother and sister and I would get in a lot of trouble. So that was always my, uh, my, my peril on Easter Sunday growing up. But we care a lot about the liturgical seasons here at the Augustine Institute, and we really want you to celebrate these seasons with joy, with fun, because God wants us to be fully alive and happy and joy-filled. And God gives us so many blessings, but children give us a window into God's blessings in a special way. In fact, children have a sense of wonder. And with that sense of wonder, we can see the giftedness of all of creation and all the blessings we have. And today we have a very special guest and a very special show about one of our programs here on Formed for children called The Wonderful World of Benjamin Cello. And when we come back, I'm going to introduce you to Benjamin Cello himself. Well, welcome back. I'm so excited to introduce to you Benjamin Cello. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you a clip of his opening of one of his shows so that you see who you're, going, who you're about to meet. Hello, I'm Benjamin Cello. Come on in, my very special friend. There's Lolly Popular and her cheerful chums, Professor Wordsworth and his hungry bookworms. There's Cowboy Roy and the animals too. We're so happy to be friends with you. Let me introduce to you our very special guest tonight, Benjamin Cello. It's such a joy to have you, Benjamin. Thank you, Tim. Hello, friends. And you brought your cello. I did. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love the music. I love the joy of your show. And one of the things you do is you visit many places, and you talk about visiting this place called the Land of the Baptized Imagination. I love that idea. Tell us what the Land of the Baptized Imagination is. The Land of the Baptized Imagination is a special place where I take my friends, children who come with me, to three special worlds where we illuminate the imagination of children. We fill it with truth, beauty, and goodness through scripture, through beautiful music, through earth science, and all sorts of things that glorify our creator. Well, one of the things you do to enter these different worlds is you enter different doors. Talk about these worlds that you take these children to. Yes, there are three magical doors. There's the blue door that takes us to Penny Whistle Park, and we visit Lolly Popular, my dear friend who's a wonderful artist, and we visit the cheerful chums who help her in all of her arts and crafts. And at Penny Whistle Park, we celebrate music and art and all of the things that we do as human beings to praise our creator. And then we also have the secret bookcase, mm -hmm. the book endless book tower where Professor Wordsworth and the bookworms consume and digest <laughs> knowledge, elevated philosophy and theology that can root us deeper in the truth of God. And then last 
last but not least is the big old barn, the brown door that takes us to the barnyard animals and Cowboy Roy, who was one incredible virtuoso on the guitar. Well, you go to some very special places, and I think one of the things I want people to do is ask questions. I know you have a lot of fans who watch here on Formed, and so if you have questions for Benjamin Cello, if your kids have questions, submit those questions to us. We have a line you can text those questions to us, and that number is 720-650-0100. So again, please text us your questions, or you could put those questions on the form platform under the comments section. So a lot of you are familiar with forms, so you can just submit those questions on formed for Benjamin Cello, and you can ask questions about these different worlds, these different places, and you have a lot of friends that you visit. Let's talk about some of these friends. Yes, Lolly Popular is one of my dearest friends. And Lolly, as I said, is a wonderful artist. She recently did a painting of me with a chicken. <laughs> right, and, and, and in this particular adventure, we were protecting this chicken, Hildegard, who had been wounded by other chickens. And this is an example of the lessons we teach Tim mm. in the land of the baptized imagination. Even though chickens will hurt their wounded, which is something that many scientists and many, many doctors know about, we human beings, because we're made in the image of mm. God, are called to care for the poor and the helpless. And so these kinds of lessons are so important for us to internalize and to memorize and to live out in our own daily lives. Oh, it's so beautiful. Well, already we're getting great questions. And so Robbie asks, what is your favorite song to play on your cello? So maybe Robbie's oh. a music, musician himself. I love yes. that question. Yes, well, that's a wonderful question. My favorite music was written by Johann Sebastian Bach, mm. who was a great man of faith. He would write, Soli Deo Gloria, mm. to God alone be the glory on every piece of music that he wrote. And he wrote some beautiful pieces for cello called the Cello Suites. And you can check out the prelude to suite number one. It's a very famous piece, and I love to play it. Now, before we're done, Robbie, I'm going to have Benjamin Cello play something for us on his cello here. So I promise you we'll get back to that. Well, you know, another great question that comes in, Will asks, what's your favorite instrument? And I'm guessing the cello. It's right here in front of you. <laughs> I love it. I've been playing the cello since I was four years old. Four years old. I am one of six siblings, believe it or not. We were a large family, are a large family, and we all play classical instruments. So I've been playing cello since I was four, and okay, music so that is a means, deep part of my life. That means that the cello was probably taller than you were when you started. <laughs> yeah, or well, bigger you than know, you they almost. make little ones, uh, and then they grow with you. That's perfect. Yeah, That's so perfect. I love the cello. That makes sense. I remember when my son learned the violin, he had a smaller, a little smaller violin. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's so fun. Well, you know, did you ever play any other instruments besides the cello? You know, I tried to play the piano briefly, but uh, that didn't end well. <laughs> uh, but I love music. Music is so important. Mm. Did you know that songs that you learn when you're young, when you're a child, are stored in the deepest part of your brain? And even if you forget things when you're older, when you get old and you begin to have maybe poor health, you might not even remember your name, but you'll still remember songs you sang when you were young. And that's why in the wonderful world, we teach children beautiful songs of scripture so that when they're old, they can sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Oh, I love it. And they can always remember those truths. Maggie asks, what's your favorite color? Maybe the doors. You have different colors for the doors, right? So I love many different colors. But as you can tell, in all of my wonderful wardrobe, I have a lot of blue. So blue is my favorite color. Mm, very good. And you have the blue door. Yes, the blue door. I love the blue whistle. door. Well, Cynthia asks, what's your favorite saint? Because you talk about saint. saints a lot on your, on your show, so I we should do. talk about that. I love yes. Cynthia picked up on that. Yes, I have a special devotion to Saint Dominic. Mm. I am I'm a third order Dominican, and so that is a deep part of my life. And so I, I aspire to preach the gospel the way Saint Dominic did, fearlessly but eloquently with love and not allowing any part of the truth to go unsaid. Now, I love it because now on one of your shows, you have a friend who's a friar, a Franciscan. Yes. And Dominic you, and Francis were great friends. Exactly. Have yeah. you had a Dominican on yet? Not yet. 
Is that going to be in one of the future shows, do you think? You know what? It may very well be. All right. In a future episode, you can look forward to this. I recently had an adventure where a barbershop quartet called the Stump Jumpers came by and sang, and they go around all over singing the good news, the oh, gospel. Wow. Well, so, well, since you bring up the gospel, Caleb asks, what's your favorite Bible verse? My favorite Bible verse, John 13, 1. Mm. Jesus knowing that he was about to return to the Father, loved his disciples to the very end. Mm, that's so beautiful. Mm. He loved them to the end. And, you know, you speak about love. And mm -hmm. on your show, when you go to the land of the baptized imagination, you have um, many, many different friends that you encounter. Mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of friendship. Yes. I think it's friendship. important for kids, and, and yes. you, you really highlight that in your show. Yes. I have so many friends. Mm. You know, friendship is an important part of life. Cowboy Roy is one of my very dear friends. He plays the guitar beautifully, and every time I visit him, he brings me joy, not just because we can play music together. And by the way, music is a wonderful way to build a friendship. So if you ever want to know another reason to learn a musical instrument, being friends with fellow musicians is a very good one. But no matter where I go, whether it's to the Bookland's Book Tower or to Cowboy Roy's Big Old Barn, I am so excited to see my friends again. And I'm excited to see you too, because you also are my friend. I want to remind everybody, it, this is so great, we're getting so many great questions. Our text line is 720-650. 0100. So text in your questions. This is your great opportunity. You get to interact with Benjamin Cello. You get a chance to watch him on Formed, and, and now you get to ask him some questions. So uh, there's a question Jenny asks, you know, what is it like to play the cello alongside Gretchen the music teacher? Oh my goodness. Gretchen the music teacher is quite the musician. She plays the mandolin. She plays the violin. She plays the guitar. And she is my very dear friend. And so every time I play with Gretchen, I go, I hope I don't mess up. <laughs> because even Benjamin Cello can mess up sometimes. But that's the beautiful thing about friendship, is you can mess up and you can laugh, and then you can start playing the song again. Mm. Well, I love you talk about laughter, because on the show, there's lots of laughter and there's lots of kids. And I want to take us to a clip uh, so that people can get a little experience, if you haven't, of a birthday party on one of your shows that you celebrated yes. with lots of laughter, lots of joy. Let's go to that clip right now, and you'll enjoy it. Birthday party, birthday <laughs> oh, party. Oh, here they come. Oh. I want to see the birthday party. Oh, there's the birthday party. <laughs> Sorry, Lollipopular. Sorry it took us so long. We were watching the butterflies. <laughs> In Petty Whistle Park, there are lots of butterflies and birds. We love to watch them. We were just looking at the pictures Lollipopular has drawn of the lark as she flies through Penny Whistle Park. You want to see? Yeah. Here's another one. <laughs> Look, she's blowing bubble gum. <laughs> and this one. And she's throwing jelly beans into the air. <laughs> and look, there's a flutterby. <laughs> I mean, the, the flutter, <laughs> the butterflies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it is good to laugh. Penny Whistle Park is full of good and wonderful things. Yes, it is. It reminds me of a scripture. Fix your mind on whatever is true and honorable on whatever is upright and pure. On whatever is good and worthy of praise. That's what puts the art in Penny Whistle Park. That's what puts the laughter in Happily Ever After. That's right, little lark. Tell us all about it. Every park needs a lark that sings. Every belly needs a chill. That's peach. Every party needs a hearty speech. Every kite needs a bright red string. Every park needs a lark that sings. Welcome back. Wasn't that beautiful to see a little window into the wonderful world of Benjamin Cello? I love the singing. I love the talk about larks and yeah. birds. You know, you, you had chickens in one episode. You talked about the larks here. 
uh, there's always this sense of wonder with the simplest things in God's creation can bring us joy, can't they? Yes, they can. In fact, Jesus talked a lot about simple things. He talked about the sparrow, and God sees every sparrow. Mm. And not a sparrow falls to the ground that God does not see. And that means that he sees you and me. And that's a beautiful truth that nature teaches us. And Jesus loved to tell us those kinds of parables. I love that element and, and the sense of wonder. And, and children bring us that sense of wonder. They participate. I love that you have children on your show participating in the story. Jojo wants to ask, what do you like to do when you're not playing music? Oh, my goodness. I love to read. That's one reason Professor Wordsworth and I are such good friends. <laughs> he has so many books. As you can see, his book tower is called the Book Endless Book Tower. And that's taken from a passage in Ecclesiastes that says, of the writing of books, there is no end. <laughs> And this is very true. It, You've written books, Tim, have you not? I've had a chance, and my yes. faculty also believe in that yes. proverb. Because <laughs> they're always writing. <laughs> they're always writing. Yes. Now, one of the things that terrifies me is the idea of bookworms. I love books. Oh. So those bookworms <laughs> scare me. The bookworms are very safe. <laughs> they are primarily concerned with consuming knowledge. Mm. And you know, that is something very important to remember. Something I know that you love, Tim, mm. which is to always be learning something. That's something we do in the wonderful world. We're always learning something new that God wants to teach us, whether it's through nature or through books and literature or through the sacred scriptures or through music or friendship. Mm. There's always something more to learn. There is always something more to learn. And I love Lucy asks a, with a heart to learn more. She says, I'm five years old and I want to learn the violin. What advice do you have for me? Oh my goodness. I love her question. Well, I happen to know a very fine violinist called Annie. And Annie is the violin teacher of the Annie Moses Method. And the Annie Moses Method is a wonderful violin curriculum that you can purchase online. So if you are interested in learning the violin, that's a wonderful way to do so. But the great thing is to get a great instructor, get a great curriculum like the Annie Moses Method, and start practicing every day. Oh, that's so beautiful. I, I hope you do that, Lucy, because you'll enjoy it. My son, Joseph, learned to play the violin at a very young age, and he loves it. He will come back when he would come back from college, when he would come back, you know, he, you would hear him playing, and it was just such a great release. Talk about what you, you know, music is such a great way to share joy with friends, but also to just be reflective when you need to be mm -hmm. recharged. Do you use your music to recharge? Oh, absolutely. You know, one of the things that music does, especially as you increase in your skill, is you're able to bless people. Mm -hmm. Recently, I performed at the Easter service at my local parish. And I had people coming up to me afterwards and saying, thank you. Thank you for sharing your cello with us. And you know, it's one thing when you start out and you're learning and you're struggling and it's difficult, but at the end, when you're creating beautiful things, it's not just for yourself, it's for other people. And Jesus told us it is better to give mm. than to receive. And that's something you learn, especially as a musician. One of the questions that Gabriel had, and he says he's a big fan of the Benjamin Cello Show. He says, what was your favorite episode to produce, to make? And oh. uh, so I love that. So we have right now, I think, six episodes on the forum platform. So yes. you know, if you haven't watched all six, you're going to want to go back and do that, kids. Yeah. You're going to want to see all the wonderful adventures of Benjamin. But what, if you had to pick a favorite one? Oh, my goodness. My very favorite episode is our Easter special. Mm -hmm. And my good friend, Brother, uh, uh, Brother Joseph, came. And he's a friar from France. And he's a shadow puppeteer. And he was able to tell the story of the passion of Jesus in the most beautiful way. And he had the most beautiful singing voice. And to see the faces of the children as they beheld the passion of Jesus, which is such a sad story in so many ways. And yet it ends in the resurrection, the most glorious ending of any story ever told. And so I loved that episode. It was a bit longer, but it was even more rewarding to share with my friends there at home. One of the things that so many people love in all your episodes is that there's songs for every episode you do. And Abby asks, and I think this is a great question, how do you come up with your songs? Because they're all original, aren't they, to the show? You guys create these, the, the, the music and the songs. Absolutely, you know, the music is written by a wonderful woman named Robin. 
and I am very close to Robin. She's almost like a mother to me, you might say. But Robin is a wonderful lyricist and songwriter, and so is Bill, her husband, who you might say is almost a father to me as well. And they write many of the songs that appear in The Wonderful World, and I love to sing them. Not just because they're well written, but because they express the truth of God. And that's a truth that all of us should bury, as I said, in the deepest part of our brain, singing them all the day long so that joy fills up our day. It's so beautiful, and I'm so happy that so many of you have told us how much you love The Benjamin Cello Show. And because we've listened to you, we, and you, you've been asking for more episodes, we're really excited to enter into a partnership with Formed and The Benjamin Cello Show so that we can have 20 new episodes this next year. Yes. I'm very excited about that. That will be exclusively on Formed. Yes, and you will see adventures like the one I was telling you about with Hildegard the Chicken or with the Stump Jumpers, the Barbershop Quartet. And there are many more adventures that I cannot wait to share with you, my friends, there at home. One of the things I, I would like to invite people to do is if you have suggestions for topics or things you want uh, Benjamin to talk about in these shows, give us your suggestions for you know, animals that you want to see, characters you want to see Absolutely. in the show. Let us know. And remember, our text line is 720-650-650. 0100 and you can leave it on the comment section on form so kids this is your chance tell us one of your favorite animals one of your favorite colors tell us something that you want us to put into the show and maybe it'll end up in one of the next episodes absolutely that would yes. be fun it would be fun ryan asks how did you come to know god and really believe in you know in god yes well you know my parents are very devout people mm -hmm. And so when I was a young boy, I was baptized into the faith and I was raised with very good teaching, very good moral teaching. And prayer was an important part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. We would pray together as a family. And as I prayed, a hunger for the scriptures was born inside of me. And I began to read and to read. I read the entire Bible when I was 11, believe it or not. True story. Wow. And because I said, if this book contains the word of God, if it contains the very truth that Jesus said was our bread, then I ought to learn every bit of it. And you know, that hunger has never left me. It has stayed with me all of my life. And I love being part of Jesus's church, the one he established, and partaking in the sacraments. You know, my very favorite sacrament is the sacrament of confession, mm. because I experienced that for the first time later in life. And when I was there and I felt the weight of my sins lift off of me, I have always longed to experience that again and again. So if you want to know how I feel about God, one of the reasons I love him so much is because he loved me first, just like he loved you first. That's so beautiful. We have a wonderful children's program for First Confession, First Communion called You Are Loved and You Are Forgiven, exactly the way you put it. Yeah. And that's the joy that we are loved and we are forgiven. Well, Winnie asks a wonderful question that I think a lot of people might have, or I'm sure they're gonna to wanna to know the answer to, and that is, where did you get the feather in your cap? <laughs> well, the feather in my cap is part of a long tradition. Now, it didn't come that, from one of the chickens on the show. Yeah, no, it did not, no, it did not. But I love birds. And those of you who have seen my very first adventure where we talk about the lark in Penny Whistle Park know that I am for the birds. And you know, Jesus was for the birds too. He loved to tell us about sparrows and many other kinds of birds who are all through the Bible. One of my favorite Psalms talks about how the dove longs to soar up to a safe mountain and be safe under the shadow of the wings of our Lord. And that's an image that Brother Joseph loves as well, being under the shadow of the wings of our Lord. You know, our Lord Jesus talked about how he longed to gather Jerusalem like a hen gathers her chicks. And if you've ever seen a hen gather her chicks, she fluffs up her feathers, and all the chickens run underneath, and she goes right over them. And to think that God at the beginning of time created that beautiful bird to show us later in life, later in the creation, he could point back to that bird and Jesus could say, look at that bird and you'll have a glimpse of how much love I have for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the one thing we do all the time, Tim, is we underestimate the love of God. We do. 
I think too, it's too easy. And that's why we just had Divine Mercy Sunday, yes. which celebrates God's great mercy for yes. everybody. He has a heart for everyone. Yes. And he wants everyone to know his love. And so that's why it's so important for us to share the love of Christ with others. And that's one of the things that happens in the wonderful world of Benjamin Cello. You guys share some of the good news of, of the gospel. Right. You're always talking about God in some small but yet beautiful way. Yes. You know, the thing about the love of God is um, I, I'm reminded of something that St. Thomas Aquinas used to say. And he believed that mercy was possibly God's greatest attribute. Mm. And I'm reminded of that on Divine Mercy Sunday. Because mercy, unlike many other attributes of God that are all wonderful in their own right, mercy is so great because it implies our lacks, right? Mm. Our deficiencies. And yet God, despite the fact that we are fallen creatures in need of his mercy, he is merciful still. That's you know, so Jesus said something. I've always thought about this. He said, God causes his son to shine on the good and the bad. Mm. And sometimes I think maybe we're not so merciful and we say, well, if only God would send the lightning over there, or maybe God would send rain over there. But no, God sends sunshine to you and to me to bring us to repentance because the Bible tells us that his kindness yeah. draws us to repentance. Well, you say that and it reminds me of my favorite Bible verse, which is Exodus 34, verse six and seven, where God's, you get seven attributes of God. And the first one is mercy. It says the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounded in steadfast love, abounded in faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for a thousand generations and forgiving iniquities, sins and transgressions. Mm -hmm. So that's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, here's a question from uh, Benjamin. Will the friar be on more episodes? So there's a Benjamin out there, Benjamin. So oh, we've got two Benjamins. Hello, Benjamin. <laughs> yes. What a good name. And he Son wants of to know, the right hand. Yes, Benjamin in yes. Hebrew. <laughs> so he wants to know, is the friar going to be in other episodes? You know what? I love Brother Joseph, and he is sure to be back. We good. can't wait for him to return. That is good to hear. I am glad you asked that question, Benjamin. Yes. Yeah, it's so great. So, you know, what's... What's one of the things that they should look forward to in future episodes that you, you have a heart to get to at some point? A lesson you want to teach on a yes. Benjamin Cello show. Yes. Well, as I was saying, I recently had an adventure with the Stump Jumpers, and they go around preaching the gospel. And on this particular adventure, we were celebrating the birthday of my grandfather. My grandfather was a deacon and a missionary, and he would go everywhere preaching the gospel. And you know, I said earlier that I was very acquainted and in love with St. Dominic, who is also a preacher of the gospel. And I think gospel preaching, Tim, is something that we have lost sight of in the modern day. We're so afraid of people not taking things the right way and all of these things. And yet when you study the saints, they would stand up before a great crowd of people and they would say, Jesus is risen, just like you were saying earlier. Yeah, Christ and is they risen. would say, Christ was crucified for you and for me, and they were unapologetic about it. And we have to be filled with the spirit so that we proclaim the good news. You know, in ancient Greece, there was something called a herald, and the herald would bring the euangelion, which is the Greek word where we get evangelism or the good, good news. news. And imagine, Long ago, we didn't have all the devices we have today. And so if you heard good news, mm. it was because far away, a runner came and maybe there was a battle. Maybe your king was far off fighting the enemy the way our Lord Jesus fought the devil when he descended into hell. And you're waiting with bated breath to hear if there has been a disastrous defeat and you have to flee for your life or there has been a victory and you are saved. And so when we bring the gospel, it's like a runner coming from far away and you don't know what he's going to say. And suddenly he yells, victory, victory, mm, all so... is better, all is well. And that joy that you imagine people felt in ancient times, that was what the apostle Paul meant when he said, 
Beautiful are the feet of those who, who bring, bring the good, good news. news. Amen. And so we must be well, filled with that kind of joy. Yes, I love that joy, and I love the joy you have. And I'm going to have you close us with a song in a minute. And But I just want to let everybody know that next week, we're going to continue that good news with the good news of this special year dedicated to St. Joseph. I'm going to have Devin Schott, and we're going to talk about the spirituality of St. Joseph. You're not going to want to miss that in this special year dedicated to St. Joseph. Now, Benjamin, can you close our show with the way you close the shows with one of your songs? Absolutely. But first, a reminder, always remember this. Remember, God loves you, and so do I, and I know Tim does too. Absolutely. Absolutely.